So Uniswap has been performing decentralized and permissionless token swaps on the Ethereum blockchain since 2018. And today, May the 5th, 2021, it upgrades to V3. So in this video, we're taking a look at the V3 upgrades and what they mean. Is there any changes for the end user or is it mainly for the liquidity providers? If you're uncertain how to use Uniswap, come and check out my video down here. I will leave it as a card above and at the end of this video for you to catch up with. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Let's hop into this one. So as a brief overview, Uniswap started in November of 2018. At that time, all the pairs, so the market pairs were Ethereum based, Ethereum to another ERC20 token. Then in May of 2020, V2 upgrade came around and then we could swap between any two ERC20s. Therefore, we saw the rise of the liquidity pools where you could match up any two ERC20 tokens and create a liquidity pool for them. In roughly two and a half years, Uniswap has now done over $232 billion worth of daily volume. In just over two and a half years, Uniswap has now done over $232 billion in trade, a rather epic feat. But now we have V3 rolling out, which is all about capital efficiency. So here is the blog post we're going to concentrate on today, introducing Uniswap V3. And here they outline how they've developed over the years and become one of the leading and largest cryptocurrency spot exchanges in the world. And they're now targeting an L1 Ethereum mainnet launch today on May the 5th with an L2 deployment on Optimism set to follow shortly after. So today is the release on the Ethereum mainnet, but for the layer two scaling solution Optimism, that will come later. And if we pop over to the Optimism website on their roadmap, they're currently in this phase here for the hackathon testnet, and it says July 2021 public mainnet. So this would lead me to believe that the Uniswap V3 launch on Optimism will come around July. In the immediate short term for end users, I don't see V3 having much of an impact on your day-to-day -day life. But when this rolls around with this mainnet release on Optimism, Uniswap could be very cheap in terms of those gas fees. And at that point, I think we would see a flurry of new users and all the people who have jumped ship to other chains, well, they may come crawling back. So as everything in the ETH landscape, not super straightforward, but hopefully in a few months, we're going to see some nice scalability and cheap transactions for Uniswap. So what are we working with right now? Well, some of the main benefits here are outlined in this article. The first one being concentrated liquidity. This is going to allow liquidity providers to actually strategically place where they want to have their liquidity set. So rather than placing their liquidity into a whole curve and thus having from price zero to infinity in which most of that liquidity would never be used, they can now place it granularly on the curve itself. So the example they place forward is in a DAI to USDC pool. Clearly the majority of the trade will be around the 99 cents to $1 and one region. So if you think about all the liquidity elsewhere on that price curve, it's just not being used. It's a real inefficient use of that capital. And it also means that the LPs only earn fees on a small portion of their capital, which fails to capitalize and compensate them for the price risk of impermanent loss. So on this little video, it shows you how you could place your liquidity along the curve wherever you deem most appropriate. And then you would be getting fees when the price is within that bound. So the LPs can combine any number of distinct concentrated positions with a single pool. So for example, if you're an LP in the ETH to die pool, you may choose to allocate $100 worth to the price range of $1,000 to $2,000 and an additional $50 to the range of $1,500 to $1,750. Users trade against the combined liquidity of all individual curves with no gas cost increase per liquidity provider. So trading fees collected at a given price range are split pro rata between LPs proportional to the amount of liquidity they contribute to that range. So this would clearly bring about strategies for LPs. You would want to decide, okay, where's the most common traded area? 
I want to target that with my liquidity and ensure I reap the most benefit from my capital and generate as much of those fee rewards as possible. So this steps into point number two here, which is capital efficiency. And from this diagram down here, they're gonna show you the effects of being more efficient with your capital as you can concentrate into particular price ranges. This means LPs can provide the same liquidity depth as V2 within specified price ranges while putting far less capital at risk. The capital saved can be held externally, invested in different assets, deposited elsewhere in DeFi, or used to increase exposure within the specified price range to earn more trading fees. The document also states that the LPs can provide liquidity with up to 4,000x the capital efficiency relative to Uniswap V2, thus earning higher returns on their capital. They've also got a handy tool down here which calculates the capital efficiency gains of a concentrated liquidity position relative to allocating capital across the entire price curve, i.e. as in V2. So you can play with this, select the amount that you want to pretend to add as liquidity. And so for example, in V3, if I just provided liquidity between these two price ranges and deposited $10,000 worth of capital, to get the same output on V2, I would have to apply $48,000 worth of capital. So there's a distinct difference here for the LPs. They have to risk a lot less to earn the same amount on fees. And on the flip side, it means that they can strategically position their liquidity where they deem best and reap a lot more reward for that. So it does seem it will be very profitable to become a liquidity provider, but you're gonna to have to be really on the ball with this. And so when you are strategically positioning your liquidity over a certain price range, you're only getting paid whilst trades are happening within that range. As soon as it moves outside of the range, you're not receiving any payments. And also, as you move outside the range, your position goes to the lesser of the two assets. So you're getting that impermanent loss. So in this state, an LP's liquidity is composed entirely of the less valuable of the two assets until the market price moves back into their specified price range or they decide to update their range to account for current prices. Within V3, we're also moving away from LP tokens. LP tokens are now gonna be represented by NFTs, non-fungible tokens. So they suggest that this means common shared positions can be made fungible via peripheral contracts or through other partner protocols. So over time, they expect increasingly sophisticated strategies to be tokenized, making it possible for LPs to participate while maintaining a passive user experience. This could include multi-positions, auto rebalancing to concentrate around the market price, fee reinvestment, lending, and more. So suggesting that the use of NFTs will actually bring about a more composable future for liquidity providers. There will also be a change to the fees and their parameters with different parameters and fee levels depending on the level of risk the LPs are taking on. So if you're in kind of a bit of a boring market such as USDC to die, the fees therefore would be very low. The chances of you getting any impermanent loss are very, very low. So you're not taking on a great deal of risk. For maybe a more normal market, the 0.3% standard would apply. And then for more exotic markets, there's now a 1% fee that can be applied. So if you've got uncorrelated assets, for example, you need to incentivize the LPs to provide the market there. I think this is a good move to actually incentivize those different exotic markets to actually exist. And on top of this as well, we know that there's a governance feature in play that can be switched on and create value accrual to the uni token. Uniswap v2 introduced a protocol fee switch which allowed a flat five basis point fee to be turned on by governance. Uniswap v3 protocol fees are far more flexible as we've just seen but the fees will be off by default but they can be turned on by governance on a per pool basis and set between 10 and 25% of the LP fees. So there is a strong expectation that at some point this will be flipped on and there will be value accrual to uni token holders. This is something that almost certainly has already started to be priced in when Uniswap was around two, three dollars at the back end of last year and people started to talk about this and this narrative started to take shape that's when we started to see the big moves in the uni price. Any widely adopted protocol 
that generates cash flow for its holder is going to take off. And so this is something I'm really looking forward to in the future and a reason why I really do need to up my uni stack. Uni's oracles actually power quite a bit of DeFi infrastructure if you didn't already know. And it says integrated into dozens of different projects, including the like of Compound. These time-weighted average price oracles are going to see a significant improvement under V3, making it possible to calculate any recent TWAP within the past nine days in a single on-chain call. This is achieved by storing an array of cumulative sums instead of just one. So there will be benefits in terms of the Oracle provision to DeFi protocols as a result of V3. And it also mentions down here that it will be at a cost reduction of around 50% to V2. Then the final thing to really note is that with V3, they've actually got a license. So this is like a business license that has been applied so that no one can come and just simply fork the code from Uniswap v3 and steal it and use it as their own. The license limits use of the v3 source code in a commercial or production setting for up to two years, at which point it will convert to a GPL license into perpetuity. So it can't be forked for two years unless you essentially pay Uniswap or the governance votes that someone can use it, which is highly unlikely. But after two years, it could then be forked. And this is clearly in response to what happened last year with the SushiSwap vampire attack. Essentially, SushiSwap just forked Uniswap, cloned it, made their own version, added a governance token with value accrual to token holders and sucked a considerable amount of liquidity from Uniswap. And so they don't want to see a repeat performance of this. Now, this kind of goes against the ethos of cryptocurrency, which is all about open source. But you can see why the innovators in this space, like Hayden Adams, want to try and protect their IP from that kind of thing just happening again. So Hayden Adams actually posted this about the efficiency of V3. He posted the equation down here for you math heads out there. But he says over the past three months, so this was January to the start of April, the price of Ethereum to BTC had been ranging from about 0.03 to 0.045. So if they plugged in the V3 formula with capital efficiency, it would be 9.8x more efficient than V2 to just have the liquidity positioned within that range. The total liquidity within that pool wrapped BTC to ETH was around $318 million dollars. This would mean that they could actually get the same level of liquidity and take on the same amount of impermanent loss with just 318 million divided by 9.8, $32 million worth of capital. So with just 10% of the inventory risk and 10% of the upfront capital, you would have had the exact same outcome. So this goes to show you in real life how capital efficiency works for the V3 rollout. So just like V1 of Uniswap still exists and some people potentially do use it, I'm not sure who does, but V2 is still here and V3 is being rolled out and there will be an option to use V3. So within this post here, Hayden goes to show that there's 26K of TVL locked in the V3 at the moment and it's offering better prices than 28 million TVL in V2 for a $7,000 swap in the die to USDC pool. So this is a V2 here. You can get a better price on V3 by clicking the button. So 7K die gets you 6938 in V2 and 6959 in V3. So expect to see this blue button down here prompting you to move over to V3. And I expect that most LP providers are going to be migrating that liquidity over there if they can get a lot more gains out of their capital with a lot less risk. So Uniswap was famous for its 400 uni airdrop back in September of 2020. That 400 uni now worth $17,300. Pretty incredible stuff. I know most of us had actually already sold it, which probably leaves us kicking ourselves at this point. The market cap of Uniswap is about 22 billion. Fully diluted valuation is around 43 billion. Coinbase's fully diluted valuation is $70 billion. Uniswap has been able to post higher volume than Coinbase in the past. And I do think going forward, as we see more crypto adoption, as we see ETH scalability, as we see Uniswap lower the fees with 
optimism. There will be more and more usage on uni over time. And I think this is a beast that inevitably consumes most of the trade on the Ethereum blockchain. So even at current $22 billion market cap, I do think there's a lot of growth to come in this one. And once governance does switch on that fee sharing proposal and Uniswap becomes a revenue generating asset for its holders, I think the price just goes a lot higher. Personally, I am underexposed to Uniswap. This is the only blue chip DeFi protocol that I have not got enough of. And it is one that I will accumulate more when the time is right. Clearly right now it's been on a hell of a run already. And sometimes you see buy the rumor, sell the news. So we're gonna see how this plays out over coming weeks. And if I do make an entry into Uniswap, I will post a video to let you guys know. So Uniswap V3 is likely to mean deeper liquidity and less slippage for end users. But primarily, this is a change for LP management. And I think less individuals are gonna be LP providers going forward, and it's gonna become a professional thing. So keep your eyes peeled for companies coming out with LP management strategies and what they have on offer in the future, as those may be areas of interest to look into. That's all for this video, folks. Make sure you subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.